Okay, um, we're going to read the story called Icarus and Daedalus today. The first thing I'm going to do is go over the vocabulary words that are on each page here. Okay, so the first vocabulary word here is liberty. Liberty is freedom from slavery or captivity. Um, the next set of words are all together. Um, aloft means high up, flying in the air. Vacancy, emptiness, unoccupied position. Real is spin and whirl. Sustained is supported. And captivity means imprisonment. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Icarus and Daedalus, a Josephine Preston Peabody. Among all those mortals who grew so wise that they learned the secrets of the gods, none was more cunning than Daedalus. Okay, if you look down at the bottom, cunning means skillful and clever. First question is, how does the first sentence indicate that the work is a myth? The reason why this is a myth is because it uses the word mortals, and it also says that they learn the secrets of the gods, and gods are associated with Greek mythology. He once built for King Minos of Crete a wonderful labyrinth a winding of winding ways so cunningly tangled up and twisted around that once inside you could never find your way out again without a magic clue. But the king's favor veered with the wind, and one day he had his master architect imprisoned in a tower. Daedalus managed to escape from his slough, but it seemed impossible to leave the island, since every ship that came or went was well guarded by order of the king. At length, watching the seagulls in the air, the only creatures that were sure of liberty, he thought of a plan for himself and his young son Icarus, who was captive with him. Okay, at the bottom, if you see King Minos of Crete, he was the son of the god Zeus. Crete is a Greek island in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, southeast of Greece. A labyrinth is a maze, and veered means change directions. Little by little, he gathered a store of feathers, great and small. He fastened those together with thread, molded them in with wax, and so fashioned two great wings that those of, like those of a bird. When they were done, Daedalus fitted them to his own shoulders, and after one or two of efforts, he found that by waving his arms, he could winnow the air and cleave it, as a swimmer does the sea. He held himself aloft, wavered this way and that with the wind, and at last, like a great fledgling, he learned to fly. All right, I'm going to go down to these words here. A winnow means beat as with wings, and a fledgling is a young bird. Why does Daedalus make wings out of feathers? Well, the reason why he's doing that is because he wants he and his son to escape their imprisonment. Without delay, he fell to work on a pair of wings for the boy Icarus and taught him carefully how to use them, bidding him beware of rash adventures among the stars. Remember, said the father, Never to fly very low or very high, for the fogs about the earth would weigh you down. But the blaze of the sun will surely melt your feathers apart if you go too near. Okay, the myth question says, what lesson does Daedalus try to teach Icarus? Basically, he's warning him. So if you fly too low, you could um, weigh you down, and then you could probably drown in the sea. And then if you fly too high the um, feathers are going to melt and then you would fall to the sea and die also. For Icarus, these cautions went in at one ear and out by the other. Who could remember to be careful when he was to fly for the first time? Are birds careful? Not they. And not an idea remained in the boy's head, but the one joy of escape. Okay, spiral review theme question. What universal theme involving parents and their children is hinted at in the be paragraph beginning for Icarus, these cautions? Well, basically, the universal theme here is that you should listen to your parents' advice so that you don't get yourself in trouble or get in danger. The day came in the fair wind that was to set them free. The father bird put on his wings, and while the light urged them to be gone, he waited to see that all was well with Icarus, for the two could not fly hand in hand. Up they rose, the boy after his father, the hateful ground of Crete sank beneath them. And the country folk who caught a glimpse of them when they were high above the treetops took it for a vision of the gods, Apollo, perhaps with Cupid after him. At first there was a terror in the joy. The wide vacancy of the air dazed them. A glance downward made their brains real. Okay, let's look at Apollo and Cupid. Apollo is the Greek god of music, poetry, and medicine identified with the sun, and Cupid is the Roman mythology, the god of love, son of Venus. 
But when a great wind filled their wings and Icarus felt himself sustained like a halicorn bird in the hollow of a wave, like a child uplifted by his mother, he forgot everything in the world but joy. He forgot Crete and the other islands that he had passed over. He saw but vaguely that winged thing in the distance before him that was his father, Daedalus. He longed for one draft of flight to quench the thirst of his captivity. He stretched out his arms to the sky and made towards the highest heavens. Um, and then if you look down the bottom, Halicin is a legendary seabird, which the ancient Greeks believed could calm the sea by resting on it. Alas for him, warmer and warmer grew the air those arms that had seemed to uphold him relaxed. His wings wavered, drooped. He fluttered his young hands vainly. He was falling. And in that terror, he remembered. The heat of the sun had melted the wax from his wings. The feathers were falling one by one like snowflakes and there was none to help. He fell like a leaf tossed down the wind, down, down, with one cry that overtook Daedalus far away. When he returned, and sought high and low for his poor boy, he saw nothing but the bird-like feathers afloat on the water, and he knew that Icarus was drowned. The nearest island he named Icaria, Icaria in a memory of the child, but he, in heavy grief, went to the temple of Apollo in Sicily, and there hung up his wings as an offering. Never again did he attempt to fly. All right, cause and effect question. What is the result of Icarus's flying too high? Well, actually his um, effect was that he he died he drowned all right looking at some questions down here that we answered in class last week with them Thursday Friday group um, in what ways does Daedalus show how clever he is he is clever because he built the labyrinth and his wings um, let's see summarize the warning Daedalus gives Icarus um, the warning is basically don't fly too high because your wings will melt, don't fly too low because you could drown. Um, what do Icarus's actions reveal about his character? This reveals that he is like, I would say daring and disobedient. Um, compare and contrast Icarus's experience of flying with Daedalus's experience. Well, Icarus was more excited about the joy of flying and he was very excited about that. Daedalus was more on the, you know, he wanted to know the mechanics of flying. All right, so that is the all the questions that we answered together in class. Um, so your work is in your Google Classroom so that you can get started on that. Let me know if you have any questions about anything. Good luck.